to the Pure Prophecy Podcast. This is Jeff, and in the studio with me is David. Hey! Hi, and Steve. Hi, Jeff. So, last time we talked through a prophecy entitled Deeper, um, and I thought it might be interesting for the listeners to hear about an application that is a result of that prophecy. So that that the deeper prophecy that we reviewed and talked through already that is a I, I've I guess I should start with this. I I've been processing through that experiencing it now for months. So that's not, it's not a new, it's not new to me. It's something that I've been in. Um, and part of, part of that prophecy was to just be. So I've just been. <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's also not the easiest for me, it's not the easiest prophecy to speak about because it's um I feel like I still am in if that makes any sense. So it's kind of hard to talk about something that you're in for me. So what you I can't turn it off and turn it on, walk no. away. No. Um it, no. It's, it's now a life beginning to be a lifestyle of being Yep. Okay. Yep. It, it's been continuous. It hasn't. It's still going. Still. So, it's what I. What's easier for me to do is share what is coming out of that place. That that's an easier thing for me to talk about mm. than what's happening in that place. Right. I don't know if this is, I'm hoping this is making sense for the listeners. But being in that place, application has come forth. Yes. With understanding that that's what we're going to share today. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, well, and if they haven't listened to that last episode, they probably need to do that before you jump into this one. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We yeah. highly recommend you go back and listen to that episode right. so that, so that this episode will make sense. This episode could stand on its own, mm -hmm. but. It'll make a lot more sense to you if you listen to the deeper. It's entitled Deeper. So in the natural, in my life, there, there's lots of lots of stuff going on. Lots of pressures, lots of, um, yeah. So it, it kind of mirrors what's going on in the spirit with that prophecy. Um, and... It's been it's been more than two months already of that type of um, weightiness, and what I was finding myself is the word that I use a lot, um, interesting word, um, is capacity. It, I, it was like my battery didn't have enough capacity in it. I just I extend my charge and I'd need to be recharged. Um, but I, I didn't have a means to recharge. I was just tapped. I, mm -hmm. I was tapped out. I, I, I would go through my energy in the first hour of the day, and then the rest of my day was just exhaustion. Um, I think it's a combination of stress and circumstances. And um, it, it, honestly, it wasn't just a one thing. It's a lot of things that were just essentially compounding so, um, one of the areas that I've been, I've been pondering and processing through in my mind is when God said, surrender and reverence to my strength. Um, so I, I kind of felt like I, I didn't have strength. Um, so I needed strength 
and I kind of knew that he was my source of strength, but what came out of that was me literally doing an exchange. Um, and for anybody listening that's not familiar with the exchange, it actually comes out of Isaiah forty thirty one, and I'd like to read that to y'all, because um, after I after I do this, I'm kind of smiling. After I do this, I'm, I kind of look back at this and went, duh, <laughs> really, duh. Um, but let me read you this verse, and then you can see why I'm saying duh. Um, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's two words in there that I kind of want to pull out in in the Hebrew context. The first is wait. For those that wait on the Lord, that Hebrew word wait actually means to twist together, to intertwine, to hope, expect, and trust. So that's a that's a an intertwining with God. And then the next word is shall renew their strength. That word for renew in the Hebrew is also a verb meaning to to exchange, to change, to to substitute. So the the duh moment here for me is um, as I intertwine myself with the Lord, I will renew my strength or exchange my strength for his strength. Um, we call that the exchange, but I, I say duh because it, it even uses the word that I needed, strength. Uh-huh. And, um, so then I spent some more time meditating on the word strength, and um, there's lots. This isn't a one-time example in the Bible. There's lots of verses. Um, Psalm 27, 1, the Lord is the strength of my life. Psalm 71, 16, I will go in the strength of the Lord God. Uh, Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the weak and those whom have no might, he increases strength. Um, yeah, the one the one verse that really is is the the key or the the foundation for me comes from Philippians four thirteen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, so what I started to do in my lack was to engage in exchanging my lack for his supply, his endless supply of strength. Um, And I would say it out loud. I think it's important to say these things out loud. So I was saying it out loud. Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So every time throughout a day that I started to feel drained or weak, I would shake it off. Literally, I would kind of shake it off like a dog shakes there, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I'd shake it off, and then I'd say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I've kind of made that very practical for me, and it's helped. It's helped me. It's helped me get through some places that I would have thought that I was weak, but nope, I kind of shook off my weakness, grabbed onto his strength. And um, yeah, I, I do that multiple times a day, sometimes multiple times an hour. I'll also add that I've, I've been deliberate to engage my, my imagination. I, I, I literally see myself step into Jesus while I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I literally step into him um, and and sort of 
put him on. Put him on me. My, I kind of wrap him around me. Um, and then <laughs> I, I, I don't know where this comes from. I'm not a brain scientist. If there's a brain scientist listening to this podcast, maybe you can help us out here. But um, I believe that when you sing this, it engages even more of your soul in this exchange. Um, So one of the things that I've also been doing is trying to sing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, So... Yeah, and I'm not a singer, but I sing it anyway. I do. I, I I do. I just sing it out. I can do all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, I just, I do that. And um, Pam, one of the, uh, the, the lady who leads our dance worship team, has actually said to me, I bet if you dance it and sing it at the same time, it's even more powerful. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't gotten that far. I'm not that bold to try to dance it. Well, the things of the natural don't understand the things of the Spirit. And it says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, so you saying it out loud is really programming your natural man to accept the ways of the Spirit. It's not that the spirit has to convince you. You have to get the body and the soul to line up with the spirit. And we have that in Thessalonians, that you would be you, you would receive wholeness, body, soul, and spirit. Mm. Uh, and so the body's at the bottom, soul's in the middle, spirit's, you know, the high end on this. And so that grounding or getting it unified, I'm moving my hand from top to bottom. You can't see that on the podcast. Um, this speaking, it is taking it out of the spirit realm, putting a voice to it so the soul and the body can begin to hear the direction it's going to need to be uh, going in. Because you're giving it new, char- you're giving it a new direction. You're giving it a, a, a new way to to process. Uh, because you've already made up in your mind, you're already convinced this is the way I believe. So now you're taking your belief and telling your body, okay, line up. This is why. We really talk to ourselves to give our body and our soul instructions to move forward. I'm not a brain science. I just I just know of this flow. I've had the wonderful uh, scripture to meditate on. Um, um, they that are in Christ, old things have passed away. All th- behold, all things have become new. So early on, I just focused on, well, I'm, I'm a new creation in Christ, so all this past has to flush away. And I spent so much time trying to flush away the, the past that it took a revelatory for the word behold to take hold of, to embrace that word having to come forth from this scripture. But I had to say it in different variations before it got off the page and, and into my soul. So I'm not going to do it because I I actually broadcast loudly the word behold. But that's when it came, my focus changed. And it went from behold, which means to stay put, don't run away from. What's the new? Stay. I'm revealing the new. Stay. I'm revealing the new. And this behold lines up with uh, the holy ground that when God shows up in the burning bush, he says the word behold to hold that person captive to stay in his presence. And so it took that revelatory shift of announcing and announcing and announcing for my soul and and my emotions and my body to line up with this spiritual word. I think when you go back to the old to the whole thing about singing or dancing that connects us is that a lot of times we talk about feeling the truth um, and that when you feel the truth, you, you just won't lose it. 
it'll just it will always remain with you. Sometimes we can memorize stuff, and it just is in our mind. <clears throat> we used to tell people well, memorize stuff on fear, and then when you get fearful, just use those <laughs> quote scriptures, that, right, quote that yeah. scripture. Well, yeah, you do it all in the natural, and nothing happens, you know. Uh, but there's a different dimension here in using this kind of an exercise in the fact that you are using your spirit imagination and recognizing that you are intertwined and seeing that, that you're intertwined, that he's in me and I'm in him and that there's this exchange going on where uh, I'm releasing my inability, my lack of strength for his strength. There's just this constant sense or feel for that. And, uh, and, and so I can see why singing it and dancing it would even make a greater impact, you know, in that context of, of seeing it, feeling it, experiencing it with him. But I wonder, uh, Jeff, in, in giving this to us and, and linking it to your other word, is there a time even recently where you have used this um, that you want to share with us? I've used it probably three or four times already today. Okay. And it's not even lunchtime yet. So I, you know what I think is important at first? I was saying it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I was feeling it, but I was saying it. Yeah. And I was, I got intentional about it. And I said, no, nope, this is what scripture says. So I'd say it, and I'd say it, and I'd say it, and I just, I didn't stop. I wouldn't relent. I, I just kept saying it. So in the beginning, I had to say it to myself a lot. Now, I can sort of just, I can step into Jesus, literally just see myself step into Jesus, and I take a breath and I grow strong. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can feel that. Well, let me try to put some of this into context, because uh, the deeper prophecy spoke about surrendering and reverencing to my strength. And out of this application uh, and finding that this prophecy is true, you've went the next step and started meditating on the Lord's strength. Yes. And... I believe that uh, Jeff alluded to this, but I want to kind of really put a mic. Uh, I want to magnify this a little bit. <clears throat> Jeff went looking at a topic of strength and Lord's strength, but the Lord the whole time has been building Jeff's confidence up that he is in Jeff and Jeff is in him. That if you go back to the prophecy and study this, yep. I'm bringing you deeper into my heart. I'm bringing a stronger presence of who I am that you are now realizing. And it's this oneness that you're really recognizing. Source. It's, it's my source. It's your source of strength. Yep. But it, there's, a, there's, there's this intensity of the one ship. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and us through Jesus in there, that we're part of the one. And it takes revel revelation over and over and over again for us to accept we're in the one. God's love was we're not a number two. We're part of the one. True. And the only way we could get be to be in part of the one was through Jesus. But this revelation now is I don't rely on Jeff's strength anymore. I go straight to Jesus. Now, eventually, you're not going to imagine going into Jesus. There's going to be a revelation that Jesus is in you, and you're moving in Jesus. And if you have a problem with that, you're going to have to study the Scriptures uh, because God didn't put you on the outskirts looking in. He put you in. And But it takes revelation to know how to move in Christ, to think like Christ, to have the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. and then— and then the scenario that we're doing today, we're moving in the might of his power. Mm -hmm. And I referenced that verse in the previous, uh, back, now I've lost the scripture, 
but it says that your faith may rest not in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Jeff that's... has been exercising by faith these strength scriptures and then believing them and then speaking them out to train body and mind and soul to line up with the direction of God and spirit. But I also want to grasp this, and I'll just say it one last time. It's really about Jeff embracing the oneship of God through this journey. Yeah, you you said something that that I wanna I wanna highlight. I'm doing this with faith, in faith, by faith. To me could be works but with faith means that i'm relying on the holy spirit mm -hmm. to supply the faith that i need so this is coming out of romans chapter 4 verse 17b god who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did to me what that says is I'm doing it with faith, with God, to call those things as though they exist. In, in this case, for me, it's my strength. I'm calling because it, it didn't feel like it existed. I, I felt exhausted. Well, for me to, to tap into to his strength does require faith, but with the Holy Spirit fueling my faith, mm -hmm. it was possible for me. So, again, I'll, I'll go back to, at first, I was saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me a couple hundred times a day. Um, now, it's maybe a dozen. Mm -hmm. But it's still, and it, it's when I'm, when I'm spent, when I'm exhausted, when I'm weak, when I don't have what I think I need to keep going, that's when it's, I guess, my conditions are favorable to me needing to have more of his strength. Don't we all? Yeah, my mentor tells a great story about this woman um, in Australia who was in her 80s. She was on the street, you know, on the sidewalk, she she passes out, and they grab her, rush her to the hospital, and she wakes up with all these things in her arms, and they, they, she says, "What what's, what's going on? Why am I here? And they said, well, you had a heart attack, and you're in the hospital. And she said, no, I need to go home. She says, you can't. You just had a heart attack. She literally pulls all of this stuff out of her arms. She says, Jesus and me can do this and jesus and me are going home and she walked home and it was a little later on this uh she was trying to do something in her yard with these kind of planter things i don't know what they look like but evidently they were heavy and she had this young boy there to help her and he couldn't budge them move them and she needed to move and finally she went over there put her shoulder under it and says all right jesus you and me and she moved them all, you know. And, I mean, here's someone who really understood the, that whole in me, I and you and me type of thing. It's just this precious lady who, who walked with that. And, I, I, you know, you can look at scriptures that, it, that, that you've been talking about, 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and, and 1 Corinthians 3, 9, where it says, uh, we're working with him uh, or in Mark, I think 16, 20, where it says, and they went out doing miracles, God working with them. And I think that's what's so important is I think sometimes we run out there and, you know, oh, I'm going to do great things for God. And God's standing back and saying, yeah, I'm not in that, mm. you know, and you go out there and you get burnt out and you get, you know, and nothing happens, and then you come back and say, well, God, what in the world? Blah, blah, blah. He, he says, if you slow down long enough to recognize that, 
you didn't ask me about doing that. You just went out and did it, you know. And it comes into the whole, you know, God idea or, or a great idea. And, and we always, I think, have to be very sensitive to the fact that if we're going to walk with God like this, that we really need to have that, that constant conscious awareness mm -hmm. that God is with us and in us. And, you know, he said that. He said, I in you and you in me, then you'll produce fruit. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think it is. I think it's that conscious awareness. Okay, God, you and me are doing this together, and it will produce fruit. Let's bless the listeners. I bless the listeners with Holy Spirit that works with them and they with him. With. I bless the listeners to rely on strength from Jesus. I bless the listeners to take what we've just spoken about and apply it, to do it. And I bless the listeners with strength in Christ. I bless those that are listening with a revelation and understanding of Ephesians 1.18 that the eyes of your understanding, the eyes of your imagination, the eyes of your heart would be opened so that you might see. I bless the listeners that this scripture not just wash over you, but wash through you and strengthen you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Amen.